there and a pleasant welcome to the National East Pride here on Star Television Network on Channel 21 with me, Hassan Koroma. Was the headline. Second General of the Southern Sports Association, Rashid Abu Konte, condemns this guy action by some unknown retailers who refuse to open their market stores. But people then want to actually reject the machine on the basis that the threshold don't come down from 350 million turnover a year to 100 million. Okay, Commercial Bank unveils their newly constructed bank in the Eastern of Italy as part of their commitment to improve on the banking sector and the base financial inclusion. So if you put together the road network, put together the financial system, we have an ecosystem that we're working upon, road and finance, and that way we saw a beautiful symbiotic relationship. If we can partner with this organization, then we can not only help people right there at the end of the country to have financial services, we can have push and pull. All these stories were small enough for you to take vision of the Star National News. Those by headlines are now for the news in details with me, Hassan Kouma. A second term reporter association, Rashid Abu Konte, has condemned the action by some unknown traders that resulted to a call to strike action by refusing to open their market stall. He made a statement on Thursday, March 3rd, as the city of Freetown experiences strike action by some businessmen with the intent not to cooperate with the National Revenue Authority over the introduction of the electronic cash machine. He spoke to Abdama Kamara in this interview. Of course, we get issue. We get issue with this ECR machine, what we all call GST machine. Now, people then want to actually reject the machine on the basis that the threshold don't come down from 350 million turnover a year to 100 million. As a result of that, it don't affect quite a lot of business system. And we know some that business is in the struggle. We're not saying we're not get difficulties then. Frustrations then don't come in. But do ya with the big. When we don't call on NRA, then come. We get a dialogue. And the dialogue they continue. Last week, then call we back. Then say for let we go, let we go talk. We go. We go, we talk to them, then say talk to we. And we representative them all be the day. So we form a working group for continuing the negotiation. And not say after that. They mean go out again, begin to get the machine them. And no sooner that bring the anger. But under no circumstances, we actually don't come to a conclusion. And if we don't come to a conclusion, a dialogue day, for let people then go around, then go print paper them. We we'll not get address, not get telephone number, not get contact. They go say for let them close shop. By the time we did get the information, the paper don't go out already. But at the ask with people them say, do ya? We we'll go back again and go open shop. Tomorrow, let's shop they not close. And I repeat, tomorrow, let's shop not close. This paper not come out from the secretariat, it not come out from me, it not come out from the president. We don't know who that actually go printing paper yeah, and go distribute them. So at the call that let the shop they all open, let we stay the cause. The Minister of uh, Trade had just come out to them. And instead of them go to Jibao, the Director General for the NRA, for go talk to them. I sure say we will prevail, but not to solve for fair government. You know, just to take the law into your hands. Negotiation day, dialogue day. So at the big one, open shop, then we continue for negotiate. We will get exactly what you want. I tell you, thank you. As part of that commitment to improve on the banking sector and deepen financial inclusion, Okel Commercial Bank has on Thursday, March 3rd, officially unveiled their newly constructed branch at the Sierra Leone Road Transport Corporation on the east end of Freetown. George Elotsan was there in a report. As part of their commitment to complement the Bank of Sierra Leone's efforts in promoting financial inclusion and inclusive economic growth in the country, the Royal Commercial Bank has on Thursday, the 3rd of March 2022, commissioned its newly constructed branch at the SLRTC head office in the eastern part of Freetown. 
While speaking, the managing director of the Rokel Commercial Bank, Dr. Ekundaya Walton Gilpin, noted that the commissioning of the SLRTC branch demonstrates that they will continue to grow as a bank, adding that it was with determination and excellence that they constructed the new branch at PWD, which he said will not only serve workers of the SLRTC, residents of the PWD community and its environs, but the country as a whole. Well, this bank has become a gregarious bank, a bank that goes out there to push the borders and doesn't feel comfortable sitting in mediocrity. So we're looking out there to see how can we impact growth in this economy, how can we partner with other organizations that are positioned to impact growth in the economy. One critical factor of um, uh, development is transportation and road development. SLRTC is a transport um, corporation and they are there to take people, products and services from one end of the country to the other. We're a financial um, service um, um, sector service provider and we're there to take financial services across the spectrum of the country and beyond. So if you put together the road network, put together the financial system, we have an ecosystem that we're working upon, road and finance, and that way we saw a beautiful symbiotic relationship. If you can partner with this organization, then we can not only help people right there at the end of the country to have financial services, we can help push and pull goods, push and pull services, push and pull overall economic growth, push and pull GDP growth, and trigger expansion in the economy and that's why we did this kind of partnership. The Deputy Managing Director, Roquel Commercial Bank, Emmanuel Bobo, pointed out that they are determined to ensure that they can have the last laugh as it in the past. The bank was seen as a laughing stock but said today the bank is seen as a manifestation of a strong institution that can show the world that Sierra Leoneans have what it takes to put footprint in the sands of time by leaving legacies behind. We are a local bank. We are a local financial institution. We know the objectives of this government. We know the objectives of the central bank. That is the reason why we as a bank, as a Sierra Leone bank, we have been leading other banks in the financial inclusion drive. Basically, financial inclusion is to get everybody involved in one way or, or the other in the financial institution. So that is the reason why we have been complementing the efforts of the central bank and the desires of government to lead in this particular arena. So no wonder we have been expanding. In the last few years, you can see that we've opened more branches than any other bank in this country. Remember also that the competition is keen, but as a local base, as a local bank, we are be very, very much proactive because we want to lead those who came from other places. You can't come from other places, foreigners, and you meet us on our own ground and you dominate us. That is the reason why we are pushing. Our objectives, the, 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 the objectives are huge. I mean, and we are, we are really ambitious to make Sierra Leone proud. The Deputy Minister of Transport and Aviation, Rex Bonafa, said residents and workers of the Sierra Leone Road Transport Corporation have the opportunity of becoming financially literate, have access to financing, adding that Rogel Commercial Bank is set to complement government's efforts at triggering a massive economic turnaround in the country. This is the bank that has stood against other international banks and they are still thriving. That's a good thing about this bank. And talking about financial inclusion, I could remember, like I said, I was the Deputy Minister of Lands. I will be playing because of the government's financial policy of single account treasury. We decided to write to all those banks having uh, accounts for the Ministry of Lands. The Open Commercial Bank was the only bank that came back to us with a financial statement indicating how much the bank the, the, the ministry had in their account. So that is that is it. That is all about banking. We stand up for something and they stand up for integrity. And that is key. It is key to financial inclusion. It is key to development. The general manager, Sigalo Goods Transport Corporation, Isaac Ken Green, said opening branch at the SLRTC demonstrates Rokel Commercial Bank's resolve to take banking to the doorstep of its customers. He added that the bank having realized the rapid development taking place around the PWD community shows how committed the bank is to the issue of financial inclusion. 
because of his partnership, RTC has provided a land space for Rukel Commercial Bank to bring the bank to the people of Kisi, the people of Kwari, the people of PWD, and we as SLRTC are also going to benefit from that. And finally, finally, because of this partnership and because of their corporate social responsibility and their consideration for the people of Sierra Leone, they have thought it fit to offer a loan facility to Sierra Leone Road Transport Corporation to procure 30 grand new buses for the people of Sierra Leone. For Star TV News, George Elliott Sam reporting. You're still watching the National News Fight here on Star Television Network on Channel 21 with me, Hassan Goma. The Vice Chancellor of Mitsu Magai Technical University, Professor Philip Kano, has revealed that construction of a new building in all three campuses of the university with some comments, noting that the university will have the best auditorium and sell it among other facilities. Here's a report. The Vice Chancellor and Principal of the Milti Magai Technical University, MMTU, Professor Dr. Philip John Kano, has revealed that construction of new buildings in all three campuses of the university will soon commence that will see the college having the best auditorium, amphitheatre, and senate, among other facilities. I found that government of President Julius Marabiu put a premium on education. The reason for the allocation of 22% of the national budget to education. It is part of our normal activities as university administrators. We always have uh, meeting, frequent meetings with our students and staff to explain to them what we are doing, the things that uh, we are able to do and the things that we are having, some challenges. And uh, we seek their own contribution also towards some of those things. And when we have important information that from government, we, need, we always use those meetings to communicate, to pass on the information regarding their welfare in this institution. So that is the reason why we call the meeting. We want to talk to them about the fees, the kind of examination that we are going to conduct that is going to carry the names of all those who have paid their fees, names and ID number, and we're going to give them serial numbers. And then we talked about a, one important activity that is coming on the 4th of this month, which is the university. The university for a very long period, a very long time, you and I know that a, <coughs> sports, within the institution. Well, if they do happen, maybe within the institution, but uh, cut across the institution, bringing all of us in the same field to participate, to compete, it has not been. And most times, sports is also one area that uh, we train people to accept defeat. If you are not a sportsmanship, you will take it anywhere. Even these little elections people are organizing, because they don't know, they don't have the spirit of sportsmanship, when they lose, they will be bad losers. But we want to thank the government to bring, again, those activities used to foster the students together, particularly the minister, Professor Alpha Tijanwuri. Under difficult circumstances, they decided that we must meet to do this intervarsity. So we need to prepare ourselves as we are the trainers of all sports experts in this country. We train them. We need to prepare. Those are the things that uh, we actually discuss. And uh, a donation from a philanthropist organization that uh, books were donated to the institution today. That's why we met this morning. The founder of Grandel, 
Fatmata Bint Bar Kano also donated books to the Miltmaga Technical University at the Great Hall Godrich Campus as a way of supporting the institution. We had to donate books and books that are ranging from um, math books, science books, the whole subject um, in line. So we have English books, math books, literature books, chemistry, physics, science, algebra, and um, um, language studies. So we're here to donate the books to the university. We're based in Columbus, Ohio, and uh, we have our, our organization, is a registered organization in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, and uh, we cater for um, school-age children up to the university. We have books ranging from primary school up to university, and we get this donation through the library, our local library. We have the donation through the, the, our friends from my job, which is home care assistance, and we have um, donation from colleges, which is a friend of mine, Dr. Judith Abala, and um, she is actually with. Um, um, Ohio Dominican University and she donated books and we have a local bookstore that is called Half Price Bookstore and they donate books to us and we have schools, high schools which is Gehenna Lincoln High School and we have um, primary schools that donate books to us. So we have a wide variety of people donating books to us. So these books are sorted out by my daughters and my son's friends and family and just, just people that want to promote education. So we have this book shipped, packed and shipped to Freetown in Beclair the Container, which is um, we distributed in a wide variety. We went all the way to five provinces. And I was very happy that we actually went all the way to the provinces because some of these people are forgotten. For Star TV News, George Elliott Sam reporting. That's all we have time for International Miss Fire for today here on Star Television Network on Channel 21. With me, Hassan Kouma. Thanks for watching and do stay with us for the very best.